It seems like every week that ChatGPT comes out with a new model, their latest one being GPT 4.5, and they're touting it as their largest and best model for ChatGPT yet. And you look at all their models, look, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna go to more models, eight, nine. They currently have nine models available. If you're on the pro plan, you get access to all of these, but which model is good for which task? In this video, I'm gonna show you what I use each model for in my workspace. So the first one they have is GPT for Omni, and they say it's great for most questions. In the back end, they're running on chat GPT for Omni. So by default, I use this model when I'm using any of my custom GPTs, something like GPT prompt fixer, when I write feature requests for feature base, to clean up my email marketing, to write my YouTube titles and YouTube descriptions, to clean up my messages for email support, and when I'm fine tuning models, I use it to format in JSON-L. I also like using GPT for Omni when I use temporary chat. I use temporary chat so that my conversations are not stored on the left side bar, and this is just to keep things organized. Like if I'm writing something quickly, clean up this text for me, and then I paste in the text, I don't wanna be storing this information each time. It's gonna make it much harder to find the actual conversations that matter. The next model that they have is ChatGPT for Omni with scheduled tasks, and it's used to ask ChatGPT to follow up later. I personally do not use this model yet, but in their introductory article about this new model, they say it's good for reminders. So if I wrote something like, remind me to learn French each day, and I sent that in, it says it's creating a task, learn French daily at 9 a.m. It wants me to turn on desktop notifications, so I'm going to allow that, and each day I'm gonna get a browser notification or a notification within ChatGPT that reminds me to learn French. And this could be pretty cool because then you have your education on autopilot. It's gonna teach you new French words each day without you having to program anything in manually. The next model is GPT 4.5. That's their newest model. And they say it's good for writing and exploring ideas. In my opinion, I don't like this model. I haven't found a great use case for it yet because it's a bit slower than GPT 4 Omni and it's a lot worse at coding than O3 Mini High. It's also not a reasoning model and lately I've been having the best luck with all of these. O1, O3 Mini, O3 Mini High, and O1 Pro mode. So ChatGPT 4.5 falls somewhere below that. The one good thing that this model has is that it can search the web. So it can give you all the most up-to-date information, which kind of eliminates the need for GPT for Omni. Now I know that free users don't have access to this model. I only get this model because I'm on Pro mode, but don't have any FOMO, don't feel like you're missing out. I personally don't use this model almost ever. If I search something like Oscars 2025 results, it's gonna search the web, it takes a bit of time, and I guess it's pretty good to get a nice quick organization of the newest information. The next group of models are the reasoning models. We have O1 and O1 Pro mode, O3 Mini and O3 Mini High. For free and plus users, the O1 model, it the O1 model on your screen will say O1 Preview. So O1 Preview is supposed to be a little worse than O1, and then O1 Pro Mode is supposed to be a little better than O1. And basically how these models are better is that they reason for longer. The longer these models reason for, the better their performance. I'm gonna start with O1 Pro Mode, and the first thing you'll notice is that the search option is disabled. So this tells me that O1 Pro does not have access to the latest information. I like to use this model in tandem with O3 Mini High because this model can search the web. So I'll get the most up-to-date information with this model and then throw it into O1 Pro. Because this model reasons for the longest amount of time, what I like to do is throw in as much information as possible into the prompt and then let it do its thing. Think of this model as a high-end executive it can find the best solution for you. For example, when I was building my AI video editor, and if you're watching this video right now, that software has edited this video. So there might be mistakes, but I coded this thing entirely with ChatGPT 01 Pro. If you're interested in learning more, I have a video link in the description. For example, this is one of the problems I was facing. 
So the logging output in Google Cloud Run is very verbose. It's writing a line for every bit of the video processing. How do I cut down on the logs? And then I would paste in my entire code that I have up to date, let it reason its way through that code, and then give me the best answer. So I'm gonna take my app.py file, I'm gonna copy all of this code, and go app.py, paste in that code, do a couple stars to break up the next one. Then we're gonna go main.py. Let's open up that file and we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna copy all of this code. So now it has everything it needs. It can see both of my main files and then I'm gonna send this in. You'll see request for O1 Pro and look at it reasoning. Look how long it's taking. It's taking a lot of time. So sometimes I'll send this all in and then I'll leave the computer, I'll go do something else. And in about five minutes or so, I'll come back and I'll have my answer. At any point, you can click on details and you can see how it's reasoning. For example, first it's identifying the logging sources. So it's mapping out the verbosity of Cloud Run service logs, particularly focusing on Python's print statements. Then it's refining the logging options. It's identifying the key sources in my code. It's targeting this output. It's adjusting the configuration, so it's tweaking the MoviePy settings. And it's doing that by passing logger equals none. Here is the output after two minutes and six seconds. And I find that O1 Pro's output is usually pretty correct. I've had very little problems with it. So I would go through this, I would copy this code, I would update my own code, and then I would test to see if it works. Which brings me to my next model which is the basic O1. They say it's used for advanced reasoning. I like to use this model after I've used O1 Pro mode. It already has all the information above it. And if I tested this code out and it didn't work, like I tried the code out and got a new error, finishing with O1 usually gets the job done. And it's good because sometimes I don't want it to reason that long every time. Like sometimes it even reasons for five to 10 minutes. And if I'm in a flow and I'm working really fast, I don't wanna to have to wait that much time each time. So O1 is a good middle ground because it only reasons for 15 to 20 seconds. The next two models are the O3 mini series. We have O3 mini and O3 mini high. Now, I don't think there is any use case for O3 mini. It absolutely makes no sense why they offer this within ChatGPT. Why would you use a lesser reasoning model than O3 mini high? And they reason so quickly that there is no difference. Now it does make sense when you're using it in the API as a developer. So in my app, Your AI Agent, there is some use cases where you'd want to use O3 Mini at a lower reasoning level. And that's because the pricing is more expensive. The more it reasons, the more input tokens it has. The price for this series is $1.10 per 1 million tokens. And if you're reasoning for 10 to 15 more steps each time, and at scale, that can really add up. But in ChatGPT, it's completely free. Especially if you're subscribed to the Pro plan, you get unlimited uses of all of these models. In the Plus plan, I think it's 150 per day for O3 Mini High. There are very few people that are gonna hit that number. I guess you'd use O3 Mini if you ran out of O3 Mini High uses. But still, for me, it makes no sense. What's good about this model is it's amazing at coding. This model is good because it can code and it can also search the latest documents. So if I prompted it, how do I write a YouTube comment via the YouTube data API curl? And I sent that in, O3 Mini High is going to search the web and reason to give me exactly how to do this. And there is my answer. It needs an authorization header needs to be application slash JSON for a content type. We need the video ID, and then we need to put it in as a top level content in the JSON body. If I go over to more models, we see GPT-4, the legacy model. No one should ever use this model ever. I don't know why it's still in the UI. And the same with GPT-4 Omni Mini. Why would you not just use GPT-4 Omni? Though GPT-4 Omni Mini makes no sense. Again, if you're a developer and you're using the API, yes, there are many cases where you'd want to use GPT-4 Omni Mini. Look at the huge difference here. 15 cents per 1 million tokens for Mini, 
and $2.50 per million tokens for GPT for Omni. The output is a huge difference to $10 per million tokens for Omni and 60 cents per million tokens for Omni Mini. If you prompt it well enough, I found that GPT for Omni Mini works just as well as GPT for Omni. If you're bad at prompting, you're gonna wanna use this model. And before we move on, look at the cost for the new GPT 4.5. $75 per million tokens for the input and $150 per million tokens for the output. That's 15 times GPT-4 Omni. I've heard it costs them a lot to train this model, but I haven't seen the output be worth it yet. If you're looking for a comp, if you're looking for a comprehensive business suite of AI agents for your company, check out the web app that I'm building live on this channel called Your AI Agent. You can access it at youraiagent.com. Every time a user has a new suggestion for an automation or an AI agent, I like to build it into the app so that everyone can take advantage of it. We have AI video editing, like what you're seeing right now, auto blogging, auto follow agents for Blue Sky and Twitter, automatic Pinterest pin creators, Tumblr blogs, chat bots, AI email support, endless Amazon affiliate agents, Google Trends to post for news websites, LinkedIn bots, AI newsletters, Reddit bots, SEO heisting your competitors, writing SERP articles that rank, social listening tools, automatic website to tweets, YouTube comment responders, and then we have a couple other YouTube agents like taking new videos on a channel and turning them into articles for your website. If you're interested in learning more, I have a full YouTube playlist on my channel that walks through each of these agents individually and how to set them up. It's very quick, it's very simple, and it's gonna save you a lot of time and get you traffic. Take a look in the description below. If you're a wannabe coder and developer like myself, and you wanna learn how to build your own AI agents, check out my online course, How to Build a Custom AI App. I'll drop a link to this in the description as well. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Peace.